。大康自然健康中心成立于一九八七年，率先将自然疗法、同类疗法同埋碗创水疗引进香港。我哋提供各项整全性治疗方式，排除体内毒素，增强自身免疫系统，一切尽在大康自然健康中心。电话。二五七七三七九八，网址三个 W d N A T U L A L H E A L I N G dot com dot H K。以下节目内容纯属主持及嘉宾个人意见，与本台立场无关。啊，各位网上听众，你哋好，啊，我系袁大明。啊，好高興呢！今日又能夠同大家一齊探到一啲近日香港發生嘅事情，或者正在困擾香港嘅問題。我哋香港出路網上電台嘅節目嘅目的呢，係希望為香港尋找一條出路，能夠真真正正解決香港面對嘅問題。咁我哋唔係希望呢，係只係同大家一齊大肆批評下政府啊、某機構或者某人對某事處理得唔好，大家發泄一番就算。我哋希望呢，係能夠呢，深入啲討論問題嘅根源啦，了解問題嘅來龍去脈。咁最後呢，提出一啲具體性嘅解決方法，建議我哋每個人喺呢種情況之下呢，其實可以做啲咩嘢呢？咁簡單嚟講，如果你係特首或者嗰位負責人，喺當時嘅處境之下呢，你會點樣去處理嗰件事？好啦，其實我哋今日嘅節目呢，可以話呢係持延續我哋下過去啊兩次所啊所講嘅，即係。點樣令香港更好？咁其實我哋都大家都知道啦，喺我參選嘅政綱裏面呢，有好詳細呢，係即係啊討論咗大概十二個十二個範疇嘅。咁但係咧具體方面呢，我哋始終係一本三廿二、三廿四頁嘅書仔裏面呢，唔可以好詳盡解釋晒嘅。咁其實好多嘢我哋可以做嘅嘢呢，我哋係應該點樣具體去做呢？可以令到香港變得更好呢？咁咁我哋上一次呢，都開始講講及到呢，即係公平貿易啦、社區發展啊，同埋行人專用區嘅咁。咁其實講起嚟講呢，即係其實我哋而家今日想所講嘅課題呢，係可以話呢解決咗我哋政綱裏面所提及嘅貧窮方面嗰個問題啦，環境嘅保護嘅問題啦，藝術文化、經濟、社區發展同埋休閒設施可以咁講呢，係簡簡單單係講行人專用區呢度呢，其實呢已經已經涉及呢，我哋政綱裏面講好多好多方面嘅範疇嘅。好啦，咁今晚呢，除咗我哋、呃、一向、啊、有阿、啊、李永康啦、黃岸然啦，咁我亦都請咗兩位嘉賓啦，其中一位 Bella 啦 ，Bella Yip 咧，你上次你都大家都都聽過，聽過佢同我哋啊喺呢方面同大家傾談㗎啦。咁仲有一位呢，咁誒、呃、叫做誒 b o b s i 咁 b o b s i 呢，其實香港人呢，我諗喺喺外國人嘅嘅嘅誒團體裏面呢，佢應該都好多人知嘅。咁佢嚟到喺亞洲呢，佢都成廿幾年嘅。咁佢本來呢，係佢一個係可以話英英籍人士啦，咁咁喺誒喺被喺喺嗰個誒被 root 啊啊黎巴嫩嗰度長大嘅嚇，咁、啊、但係咧佢就誒嚟、啊、到香港都成成成廿即係廿幾年歷史㗎啦。咁我認認識 Bob 時咧都好多好多年㗎啦。佢曾經呢，喺喺誒喺嚟到嗰度呢，有有一間誒、啊、一間餐館啦，咁係專門係俾嗰啲誒素食嘅。但唔單止淨係素食喎，佢同埋嗰啲食物呢，通常呢係盡量揾一啲有機嘅同埋完整嘅素食嘅西式嘅素食餐館。咁香港嚟講呢，如果你真係想去有機會即係嘗試到呢一類嘅西式嘅啊嘅素食館呢，差唔多呢都係佢嗰間。咁好彩啦，佢最近呢就嚟去中環呢，就開咗另一間叫做 Live 嘅 Live Cafe 呢。都係同嚇喺嚟到嗰間嘅誒好相似嘅個依誒，都係用用一個有機嘅素食嘅完整嘅，然後嘅嘅材料做出嚟嘅嘅有機食物咁。咁佢、那個嗰、那個餐廳有啲好特色嘅地方咧，即係佢以前叫 bookworm 啊，點解叫 bookworm 咧？就因為入邊咧好多書嘅，好多好多書俾你去睇嘅。咁喺香港亦都係㗎，喺喺嗰個中環嗰、那個喺個行人行人電梯上去嗰度啦。咁喺邊邊嗰度嘅，咁佢佢就開咗呢間叫 Live Cap Live 嗰個 cafe 咧，咁啊好多香港嘅即係外籍人士咧，都都好熟噶啦咁。咁要結識多啲呢類嘅即係同聲同氣嘅綠色嘅人物咧，基本上咧 Live Cafe is a place to go 啊，你就會去見到。好啦，咁點解咧 Box 咧就會今晚嚟同我哋啊分享咧？因為原來 Box 最近咧係喺喺遇到一位誒喺、啊、哥倫比亞啊，波哥就哥倫比亞咧。系系包括系一个一位市长嚟嘅，咁原来呢，我哋头先所讲嘅行人专用区呢，始终香港呢系发展得系好好初段嘅，即系即系我哋知道有，咁但系呢系点样用法呢？咁我哋都唔系话
即係唔係好多啲活動喺個行人專用區度嘅。但喺外國呢，行人專用區呢，其實我上次都提及啦，我去到乜嘢個國家呢？啊，首先温温哥華又好 ，Sydney 又好 ，Melbourne 又好，倫敦又好，你都睇到呢，所有大城市裏面呢，都有好多呢啲行人專用區呢，係喺喺喺行人專用區好多好多嘢係，然後係係可以睇得到嘅。咁好啦，咁 Bob 時咧就今日。就同我哋分享一下啦嚇，佢最近咧喺誒喺嗰一位誒哥倫比亞嘅市長咧，波佢頭嘅嗰位 Mayor 咧，咁佢就講咗佢誒喺當地嘅經驗嘅。So， Bob， we like to know what is a, what is you know the story that you hear from from this mayor from Bogota, Colombia about you know their experience with the pedestrian area. You know, you know in Hong Kong you know, it's very rudimentary. You know, compared to most countries, so how can that be, you know, better developed? Um, a week ago, the American Institute of Architects invited Dr. Enrique, who was the former mayor of Bogota in Colombia, and he was invited to share his experience, his first-hand experience, in pedestrianizing large sections of Bogota, the capital city of Colombia. And uh, he gave a very passionate and enlivened speech about the concept of pedestrianization. And it was a full house, and there was people from all walks of life, a lot of architects, engineers, designers, town planners. Sadly, there weren't many people from the government, um, mm. but this was a very timely message. And um, within the three years of him being mayor of Bogota, he literally transformed the city into a city with a strong presence of pedestrianization. They had mm -hmm. no previous concept of pedestrianization in that city. And as a result, pollution was lessened, um, people's happiness levels increased. Um, it was a major transformation for the city. And he shared this with us. And his angle, in a nutshell, is that every major city in the world is moving towards pedestrianization. Every city that can call itself a class city of any caliber is moving towards pedestrianization. And um, in a nutshell, he was saying this is the way forwards. He gave some very good examples of different cities around the world and how they're pedestrianized and how some of the challenges they've had. But overall, um, it's just positive. It's the way forwards. Um, Hong Kong seems to be the exception. Um, mm -hmm. As a world-class city, we don't have a downtown area. We don't have um, an area that could be called a pedestrian area, which is an area for pedestrians as opposed to an area for cars or mm -hmm. vehicles. Um, and this is um, quite sad, actually. So it is my hope, um, and I believe this hope is shared by many people, that we could have an area in Hong Kong um, which is for people, an area for people to enjoy, for kids to walk around safely, um, without having to worry about cars, without having mm -hmm. to worry about excessive pollution, um, an area where people can just be humans in. Mm -hmm. um, and this, uh, of course, is very good for the community because it encourages interaction with people, it encourages a healthy community. Um, it's very good for um, businesses um, because it attracts more people, therefore attracts more business, and um, an area which um, I think could really do with pedestrianizing is Soho. Hmm. Now, this is an area that is moving towards pedestrianization organically because of the escalator. Uh -huh. So a lot of people are using this escalator up and down. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the area Soho has grown around this mm -hmm. uh, escalator. Um, and as we all know, Soho is a major tourist attraction. It's um, a mecca, if you like, for cafes, restaurants. Mm. So it could naturally be designed, developed towards pedestrianization um, in a very inexpensive, unobtrusive, simple way. And if so, this would have a major impact on the entire Hong Kong community. 
Now, because interestingly, when you talk about you know, the, the particular area in Soho, right, and why it developed into a, 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 pedestrian, uh, a pedestrian area, it's almost like organically, but in some way it, it has a lot to do with the escalator. Mm. The escalator carry people, not mm. car. Mm. Right, so, uh, I mean, if you know the area, it's, it's kind of a hilly area. You know, it's, there's not many uh, large uh, span of uh, flat surfaces in the area. But you need people to move around. Mm. So escalators serve that particular mm. purpose. Mm. Now, uh, in Bogota, what, I mean, what do, what do, how do they use this, uh, the, this pedestrian space? Is that the way we traditionally use people to sell different kind of uh, snack food and street performers? Did, did the mayor elaborate on that? He, he didn't go into so much detail. He showed some slides. Mm. Um, basically, it's been a big success for the bicycle. Bicycle. Bicycles. Oh. Now, of course, China has a long tradition of bicycles. They discourage that, though. <laughs> but now, now the bicycle is becoming the second-hand, the second-hand citizen, if you like, and cars yeah. are becoming the first-hand citizen. But the rest of the world is moving towards bicycles. Mm -hmm. In Europe, the sales of bicycles are increasing. More and more people are riding bicycles because it's healthier, it's more eco-friendly. Yeah. Um, it's a pleasant way to move around. And likewise in Bogota, the bicycle is reigning now. It's becoming, oh. becoming king again. And of course, public transports like some buses, they have bus routes and some tram routes as well. Right. So it's an eco-friendly, pollution-less area, mm. hence the attraction for people. Mm. And I believe we could do the same in Soho by creating an area where people could sit on the streets, enjoying many, many restaurants and cafes that ha are springing up in Soho. So these restaurants can go al fresco, and people can enjoy the outdoors without having to worry about inhaling smoke from cars and delivery trucks. Mm. I mean, anyone who's visited Soho recently can, can sympathize that it's very difficult to walk around the streets of Soho, um, Staunton Street, Elgin Street. The pavements are very narrow. narrow yeah. They're not designed for people. Um, so you're walking with one foot on the pavement, one foot on, on the roads, and you're dodging taxis and, and, and trucks. Two nights ago, I was walking in Soho with some friends, and I was talking to my friend and saying, any day now, somebody's going to get run over. This is serious. Mm. Within minutes of me having said this, this taxi almost ran over the person behind me. Mm. And they were shouting at each other. And mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't the taxi's fault, and it wasn't the person's fault. Yeah. It was neither of them's fault, but... You know, we should create an area, a small area, as an experiment for people. This way we can have street theater, we can have street furniture, we can plant some trees, we can have some benches, we can have al fresco dining, we can even have a farmer's market now once when a you week, perhaps. Bossy, huh? I know there's a place in Hong Kong with, which fulfills all your criteria. It's in Changzhou. Really? Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, somewhere in Stanley, I think. But Stanley not in as some big as Chiang Mai. Chiang is an yeah. island. The, the whole island also is... Also, don't like forget Lama Island, Island as well. Yeah. Yong Shu Wan. Yes, Island. but not as big as Chiang Mai. And the shops, mm. the varieties of the shops are not as 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 good as Chiang Mai. Mm. But how mm. would you say the difference? I think you must... There's a fundamental difference. There's a huge yeah. difference. Chung Chao and Yong Shiwan and Lama Island and Ping Chao, these are islands, outlying islands, where people go to relax for the weekend, to get away. But a downtown area is an area downtown in the city that can be enjoyed at any time by the locals, by tourists. And every major city needs an area for people without cars. Why not? You know, if 100% if of the city is for cars, why not dedicate 5%? for people. And if you look at Soho, Soho is going in that direction naturally and organically. There are a lot of boutiques opening up, small restaurants, small cafes. You've got the escalator. Mm. So it's not like we have to reinvent the wheel. It's happening that way anyway. So I think it'd be a question of where if um, the government gives an inch, the people will give a mile. Mm. It's, it's, it's growing organically in that way. And it's also about conservation. It's about conserving a lot of the old mm. buildings that already exist in Soho. Some of them in the Soho area, some of them are very unique. 
Yeah. There's a row of tenement buildings, about 15 buildings, and I think they're the last standing buildings of their kind in Hong Kong. Now, these should not be demolished. They should be handed over to the private sector, and they could be developed into beautiful buildings to be enjoyed by one and all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand some some buildings are going to... I mean, they're going to be, okay, darker and darker. Okay, actually, this is about pollution. But actually, I'm just thinking that, okay... The Hong Kong economy is driving because of the economy, okay? Okay? Because they they're just going to round and round, okay? For 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 very high okay, for very high velocity. Okay. If you are going to okay, if you are going to halt it, okay, what are you going to compensate it? That's what all the okay, that's what all the um commercials they're worrying about, okay? Because Hong Kong is relying on the economy, okay? That means generate the income, generate the source of income of, okay, of getting, of, of getting everything, okay, into it. For example, we're okay, selling land, selling a lot of, okay, okay, to, uh, okay, to get on with the industrial estates, okay, a lot of things. Okay, what are you going to compensate on it, okay? On the loss because they're just thinking, okay, this is not compensatable, okay? Some some men maybe think about it, okay? What are you going to think about it? Well, the idea of pedestrianizing or anywhere in the world, doesn't matter, east, west, north, south, wherever there's been pedestrianization, the economy has boomed. There's been an increase in business. It's very good for business. It's very good for the commercial, if you like. Um, so it will attract tourists, it will attract local business, it will be a very attractive option on a- every level and I can't really see um, many people objecting because this is a win-win scenario for the private sector, the government sector, the tourist sector. But above all, it, it, is, it is giving back to the community an area for the people, not for the cars. It's another very interesting thing that Professor Enrique from uh, Colombia mentioned. He said, cars are infringing on human rights. Mm -hmm. The car is infringing on the human rights. Because next to the car, the human cannot (laughs) compete. And he used the psychology uh, with children. If you say in a room full of children, watch out a car, children are going to jump, they're going to be scared. But if you said, watch out a bicycle or watch out a tree, there will be no reaction from the child. Mm-hmm. Why is this? There are few streets, especially in Mong Kok and I think one outside our district, mm. and then broadcast mm. in the evening mm. and over the night, and people can walk around. Very successful too. And you think, but, but it's not, not what you are thinking of pedestrian, because they can't plant trees there. And the car still going on during the daytime. Mm. So it's only not what you are saying. Well, pedestrian area, for example, we're talking about Soho. You mm. have to allow emergency vehicles to come in, police, mm. oh. fire, ambulance. In, in, when you pedestrianize a place, you don't stop cars coming in. Goods have to be delivered to the restaurants, to the cafes, to the businesses. So you allow cars to come in mm. in the quiet times, say between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning. All mm. deliveries, all goods can be delivered. But emergency access should always be available 24 hours. Mm. And that means there is a section of the street which is clearly zoned as emergency. Mm. So cafes cannot put furniture there. So, But except this restricted area, small mm. piece of area, mm-hmm. the, the whole area is, is not car allowed 24 hours. Correct. That so is what you mean by pedestrian. Correct. But the street in Hong Kong is not. And during the daytime, the vehicle yeah, is for vehicle. Time. That is like a half measure. It's right. Are we doing it? Are we not doing it? There is no commitment. You either commit or you don't. Mm-hmm. No, I was just in the Hong Kong pedestrian zone today yes. at uh, 4 o'clock daytime. Wow. And it is uh, it, it has no car. It is pedestrianized. Full of people only. Full of people only, yes, mm. people only. Different kind of people doing uh, mm. whatever activities, promotions, commercials, 
uh, yeah, but this is another problem in Hong Kong. I think the um, government is thinking about cancelling the Mong Kok uh, pedestrian zone because it says uh, the original idea is to let people to walk. Mm. But now all sorts of uh, things are going on, like all kind of actions. They're uh, just thinking like a, a, a passageway for people to walk through? Yes. Like, you know. Yes. <laughs> and so um, like street uh, performance is not welcome by this definition. Yes. And so they are thinking about cancelling. This is just the mm. news in June, released in June. So just one month ago. Yes. So I think, I think it was a traffic control only. Well, I'm no. sorry. That <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of difficulties of cancelling this kind of pedestrian zone because, first of all, okay, if you are just cancelling the pedestrian zones, there are lots of okay, there's a lot of uh, people that are affected by the by by the cancelling of this pedestrian zone because, uh, you know, the performers first of all, and also those okay who are benefited from it. Okay, do you know a lot of people actually? walk along the street, okay, freely, okay, along the pedestrian zone, okay, um, okay, um, apart from, okay, just walk along the pedestrian zone with cars, okay, I think there's a kind of difficulties between it, but I think, okay, at least the idea of pedestrian zones, okay, if, okay, if the Hong Kong government is not going to preserve it, okay, it will be a lot more problem about it. And it's not about the environmental problem. It's about okay, the freedom of people of going f of of going along the pedestrian zone of doing whatever they want. Okay, you should enable people to have a song of doing whatever they want, whatever they want. Okay, this this is about the freedom of the people. Mm -hmm. Okay, this really that, that that's really about the, that that issue. And then, and then okay for environmental issue, I think. Okay, you should okay explore a lot of places for the for for the people to to really going on for the um, environmental songs. Okay, to walk along and to not allow the cars to to go on. Okay, like the Yoho Town in Yunnan, or like okay, uh, or, or or like uh, somewhere else. Okay, okay, and then you invent this kind of songs, and then it will really benefit the environment. I sure. think that's true. Of course, yeah. And it can grow organically and creatively and culturally. And it, uh, I, I can see only positive coming out of pedestrianizing. We're not talking about pedestrianizing all of Hong Kong. We're just talking about pedestrianizing one small area and see how it goes, you know, mm -hmm. as it starts. The most important point of pedestrianization is it increases human context. Mm. It bonds people together. Mm. Imagine there's a road between you and me mm. and on the road there's car rushing in and out. You can't have you can't have any human contact. Exactly. So if I give you a map, Bobby, you pick up any place you like from Hong Kong. Do you do you have any idea which is the best place to fulfill your wishes? to fulfill your dreams? Soho. Soho. Because of the current infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So to pedestrianize Soho would require minimum efforts compared to pedestrianizing other areas. Because either side of Soho you have two historical buildings which are being preserved. Or at least the old Bailey police station mm -hmm. and the magistrate and the old prison, Victoria prison, has been preserved. And that is to be developed um, for something, for the people in a cultural, creative way. That's already happening. Now, just to the side of that, you have Soho, you have Staunton Street, you have Elgin Street. And on the other side, you have the old police married quarters. Mm -hmm. Now, it hasn't been decided yet what's happening with these old police married quarters. But there's talk, the most recent talk is about a hotel being developed there. So sandwiched in between these two historical buildings... You've got Soho. You've got what I call the Soho Loop, which is Thornton Street, Elgin Street, full of cafes and restaurants and bars, which can easily go out fresco. And even further, um, I recently published an article called The Green Heart for Central, which was published in uh, Positive News. It's about linking um, the area I just described, Soho, with the street markets, 
um, the Graham Street Market, and with another green corridor going all the way down to Victoria Harbour, which is to be redesigned. So you can have green corridors coming down, following the escalator, parallel to the escalator, running through the markets all the way down to Victoria Harbour. And this whole area could become for the people. I, I have been to Soho uh, a few times, but I haven't driven through the area. Uh, how many uh, streets are involved there? I mean, w would some of the streets be uh, an essential passageway for people to go up to the mid-level? I mean, can we really block it off practically? Or no, not in the Soho. Not by closing Elgin Street and Staunton Street. Two streets. Two streets. Okay. It forms like a loop. And either side you've got um, Aberdeen Street, which is a thoroughway. Okay. It needs to be kept open. Mm. And then on this side you've got Old Bailey Street. So, so it's going down, vertically Going down, down right? yes. Both streets go down, not up. Um, there is one street that comes up from Hollywood Road, and it comes up and it hooks into Staunton Street. Now, mm. this could pr be a bit of a challenge, mm. but it can be overcome okay. by creating pedestrian bridges over these streets. Oh, so you okay. need to completely, yeah. completely block yeah. the traffic just on that section. Right. And then, of course, deliveries, pickups, they can all come in at certain hours. There can be drop-off points for taxis. On Old Bailey Street, you can have a um, drop-off pickup point for taxis so people can be dropped off easily, mm. or people can come up or down the escalator. Mm. Because, you know, the, the present trend in Hong Kong is just uh, uh, building a mega shopping mall, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the, I think the recent example is the, the element. You know, I, I just went there recently with my brother. We went there for a movie. And you notice that, you know, right outside the mall, there's nothing but just freeways, just mm -hmm. you know, crisscrossing the, the surrounding the whole mall. So no wonder they say the mall is not, is not doing business, you know, at all because... What, what do you do? You either go to the mall and there's nothing, you know, in the, in the surrounding area. So we need these adjoining spaces where people can just kind of naturally walk around and, and go through it. Mm. So uh, this is the kind of trend that we need to kind of uh, watch out for because most of the time in, people in Hong Kong now, all, the, the only entertainment they have is go to the mall, do the shopping, eating, and go to the movie. And, and that's it, you know, so different from the time when we grew up in Hong Kong. Well, actually, I just think okay about the uh, about the okay in 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 the um, Kowloon okay in the Kowloon station okay yes. something in the Kowloon station. I just think okay something that is okay that's oversupplied. You know those shopping malls in the Kowloon station. It's actually I don't know whether it, there's anyone who are interested in walking there and mm. then going there and then to um, mm -mm. and then to um, to to shop there. Yeah. So that's why I think sometimes the the Hong Kong marketers they are just okay. They're just overly. They're just predicting something that is okay unexpectedly. Just okay, get something okay that's not within the expectation. Okay. We, you know, we've always been talking about, you know, the, all the development, cultural development geared towards the real estate development. I mean, that's what, you know, is so obvious to most people. Francis, fortunately, fortunately, because you don't have wife and you don't have girlfriends. They all love shopping. Hey, I object, <laughs> I object. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but, but actually, I, I, I don't think, yeah. They only complain, yes. Okay, <laughs> they only complain. There's not enough shopping places for them. <laughs> well, to understand the phenomenon, I just, uh, I repeat that website, www.thestoryofstuff, S-T-U-F-F, -F, mm -hmm. thestoryofstuff. Dot, you know, dot com. Just watch it and then you will see why this phenomenon happened. We've all been brainwashed. We've all been, you know. Yeah, yeah I think if uh, Soho is go, uh, could be pedestrianized, um, like for example, a Sunday farmer's market in the morning uh, mm. from 9, maybe from 8 o'clock to until noon, uh, open in that area could be really something special for Hong Kong because it will recover like a lot of old handicraft works yes, yes. like you know a lot of mid-age people now mm -hmm. in Hong Kong they have good handicraft skills like mm. woodworking and sewing engraving yes and if they could sell like their stuff in the market where people would spend money to buy which mm -hmm. the whole area would be 
a good market for it. Yes. It I've seen it. I've seen that you know uh, this uh, uh, street store temporary set up. I think right in that uh, in in that area, the streets were narrow, but you don't need a lot of space mm -hmm. to do that. But even for uh, street performers, I mean, are they are they feasible? This area? Very feasible. Mm. Very feasible. It'll add a lot of culture, arts, crafts. It could can all happen and. Mm -hmm. When something happens organically, it means it grows naturally according to laws of nature. Mm. There is only harmony there, and there's beautiful synergies. And uh, I've, I've been working and living in the Soho area for the last five years, and I'm seeing this develop more and more. There's a beautiful synergy. Uh, it, it's kind of a natural growth, if you like. And it will follow suit that street performers can come in and, you know, to have some street theater, which will entertain people, entertain families. Soho could become a very family orientated place where you'd bring the kids and maybe the mothers in law, the grandparents, and you can sit there, you can eat, you can walk around, you can be entertained by a street theater. Hmm. And, you know, it's just very close to other um, historical places in the area, like the Manmoy Temple on, on Hollywood Road and the Cat Street Market. You've got the Graham Street Market, um, a lot of markets in the area, old buildings. Mm -hmm. And it's just a uh, stone's throw away down to Victoria Harbour. So, in, in my opinion, I, I feel Hong Kong could really do with a downtown area, Hong Kong side, Hong Kong Island. But that Soho but area will at least serve the people in the mid-level, right? As far as I know, if you go up further, then, then nothing. It's just, just narrow streets, yes. you know, essential roads for, to yes. serve the, the residents there. Mm. So Soho will be able will serve that purpose, you know, mm. on, on weekend or even weekday. Mm. You know, people can just gather mm. in the area mm. for entertainment, for, for, for eat, you know. Yes. But I'm sorry to disappoint you that every plan mm. that what we are thinking that is feasible, Mm. Okay, that are feasible. Okay, they are just thinking. Okay, the government officials, yeah. they are just thinking they are not feasible. Okay, for example, they have to because they have to entertain those. Okay, those tycoons. They have to entertain a lot of. Uh, they have to entertain a lot of persons. Okay, that may not be relevant. But okay, because they have to entertain them, they are just rating these kind of proposals. Okay, we are just raising as not feasible. That's what the problem is. Okay. Now, with, with the Soho, you know, Bob was saying that it just evolved organically, right? I mean, that okay. means, you know, he hasn't really uh, encountered any uh, strong opposition, as far as I know, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just something that's happening already. So it's not yeah. like a, a new development project that someone wants to impose on it and develop it from scratch. What Bob is saying that is already happening. So why not just, just facilitate that further and just, just turn it into a pedestrian area? That, that's all. I mean, okay. that's why he, that we are... Okay. That, is the, that is the fundamental difference. It's yeah. like tape, taking a shopping mall and building it on a desert island. Then right. you wonder why it hasn't been successful. Mm -hmm. Because then you'd have to build infrastructure and trains. And right. But in, in Soho, in this particular case, and this mm. is why I champion this idea, because it's already started to happen. It's mm. already growing organically in that direction. So it, it requires minimum investment, minimum infrastructural work. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not pour, pouring any cold water. I don't want to pour any cold water on it. Mm. But the problem is, those government officials are really so stubborn, mm. okay? They really don't, okay, focus on the matter that they want to, okay, that they want to improve the things. But what they, what they are wanting is to, okay, to, to entertain every, okay, every difference, okay, every difference, okay, parties that we are not I expecting it. That's the problem. Okay, I think the problem for the government is is is, is so serious. Okay, anyway. we'll we'll Sorry go into about the it. opposition that if uh, if any that we, you know we're going to look into that after a short break. Hiya 4 Now, I mean, w the, the kind of project, you know, you just described to us, 
uh, um, a major project. You know, the people behind them are probably real professional designer, architects, right? And it probably involves a sizable area. So to put that in place, you have to overcome uh, some uh, conflicting interests. Probably that the area belongs to different different company, mm -hmm. not not just total government land, right? So um, what what kind of a uh, plan has been in place, you know, to, to, to make it happen. What, what, what things we need to do step by step. First of all, people have to, to like the idea. Design has been done. Model has been built. You know, people can take a good look at it. And how can people help? I mean, if, if people want that sort of thing, I mean, can people be galvanized to do something? Indeed, uh, there are many challenges. Mm. Um, of course, there's a lot of interests involved in uh, many different um, government departments. And this has always been a a problem in Hong Kong is there's too many different government departments handling one particular area. So you have to get the consensus from all of them and so on and so forth. Um, a campaign, as far as I know, has not been started yet to pedestrianize Soho. Um, at the moment, I've put out a vision, and it's not necessarily a new vision. There's been similar visions put out over the years for pedestrianizing Soho. But a campaign will have to be started. Mm. And I've been advised that it will probably take about a year for this campaign to come to fruition. And that would involve um, creating some models, some plans, liaising with the various government departments, uh, liaising with business owners in Soho, residential owners, uh, petitions, getting the signatures and the voices of the people. That will be needed. Um, sure, it will it, be hard work and um, a handful of people will have to dedicate probably a year of their life to mm. uh, manifest this vision but I think it is one of the greatest gifts that could be given to Hong Kong at this moment in time mm. to have a pedestrian area for the people there are a lot of professionals, architects town planners, engineers who have put some thought into this and the consensus is that it's very feasible, it's practical, it's um, relatively inexpensive. Um, mm. So it, it can be done. And above all, it's an idea whose time has come. Mm -hmm. And ideas who've, whose time has come generally get the support um, and the consensus from the people. And the government uh, invariably follows suit. So I, I believe the time is ripe, more than ripe, to start a campaign to pedestrianize the Soho area. Hmm. Because, you know, uh, even from our uh, childhood days, or, or not, not that long ago, we still have certain areas like these uh, uh, people's night, night club, uh, night market, right? And I think th those areas are kind of gone now, uh, where, you know, people traditionally just set up some, some uh, uh, shops or ev even tailor-made, you know, setups there. Mm. And for on the weekend, or I think every night, or just just the weekend, Sunday every day, night. every night, every right? Night. So, I mean, we do have uh, 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 markets like this. We mm -hmm. call the farmers markets like that. And um, what you envision is a kind of very classy one. I can see that if you involve all these architects, you know, designer, they probably you know have come up with really really a uh, first class type of a design. But the other area that we have experienced with. Uh, it just it just happened, you know. People just do it. They make a they make a, a probably quite a good living uh, doing these small businesses on, in this kind of uh, uh, night night market. And uh, in our policy statement, we we know we try to uh, look into the the poverty issue. I mean, why why is that? You know, all, all, almost a million people in Hong Kong are living in poverty, and the number is 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 increasing. So you know, how can we solve that? And one of the things that we we, we Fall of is you know we need more of more and more this sort of uh, uh, local activity, local businesses, not just uh, 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 real estate you know development, big projects like that. So what Francis was saying, that of course you, there will be opposition, but you know if they will, you know, what we're trying to do is to better Hong Kong. So with the projects like what you have, you know, we set up this Better Hong Kong um, Movement Association four years ago. If the idea is that we will entertain you know any kind of project, you know under this kind of a platform a structure. So, it is very project oriented. If there's something that, that's worth doing, and there are people you know who are willing to do it, and we can you know uh, uh, you know get uh, enough funding, then it will happen. And when the project is done, you know it will be gone. And then, and the Better Hong Kong uh, Movement Association is kind of set up for this kind of purpose. Mm -hmm. 
So you don't have to have set up a whole association, you know, from scratch just mm -hmm. just to do something project because it may happen, it may not happen. It may it may you know it may just die halfway. But with with, uh, with a structure like Better Hong Kong uh, Movement Association already in place, that you know it's very easy to kind of uh, to entertain this sort of uh, project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, apart from it, okay, we accept it, okay, for only establishing, okay, a lot of places for flea markets, for a lot, I think in Hong Kong there's a lot of markets for the people in Hong Kong to get okay, to establish their business actually, but actually that's not enough, okay, still. Okay, so that's why you're proposing about the Soho, okay, pedestrian ways, and then there's a lot of places for the people in Hong Kong to enjoy, okay, to walk along, to shop there, okay, and then, okay, to enjoy the, the, the day, okay. And in Hong Kong, okay, there's still a lot of places, okay, there's still, okay, there's still, okay, again, okay, being likely to be invented to, okay, to suit that kind of way. But for the but for the commercial, okay, for the commercial purposes, they just think, okay, because there's a lot of places, okay, there, there's a lot of businesses to be competing with those large commercials, okay, of doing these kind of things. Okay, they're just, they're, they're just going to be frightened by it. So that's why, okay, in the, it, the whole government doesn't, okay, really, okay, going to pursue it okay really rapidly against this uh, again this kind of proposals mm -hmm. okay so that's the that, that's i think that's about the problem of hong kong okay mm -hmm. that's actually about okay commercial oriented and about okay those large commercials oriented okay that's the kind of problem yes indeed um th there are some some big challenges but if you look at uh, pedestrianized areas um, in Europe, for example, I'm, I'm more familiar with the ones in Europe, so I can speak for those. They have been extremely successful on a commercial level, but also extremely successful on a cultural level. So it's marrying the commercial with the cultural, with the people, and this is what's lacking in shopping malls. This is why the era of the shopping mall is also coming to an end. And again, I don't mean today or tomorrow. I'm just talking the way how we're evolving as human beings. Because shopping malls lack culture. They lack open space. They lack nature. They lack that integral form of developing. While pedestrianizing streets, especially historical streets like the ones we have in um, Soho and Shengwan area, there's a lot of historical um, buildings there which need to be preserved and protected. And this in itself will attract tourists, both local and overseas. So there's nothing wrong with commercialization. You know, this will develop an economy, a local economy, which will benefit the locals, the shops, the businesses. But as Bella was saying earlier, we can also have street markets where local handicrafts, trades, craftsmanship, all of this can be encouraged. And if you look at Soho carefully, you'll see an interesting phenomenon that's happening. Boutiques are opening up. Small individual boutiques, not op opened up by big chain stores, mm. but individuals, um, local artists who, who are creating handcrafted um, gifts which they make in the shop and they sell. So this can also be encouraged. And this is where you see the organic growth. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really happening, it's solid, it's consistent, it's progressive, it's sustainable. And what the government departments need to do is look more carefully at this and ask the question, why is Soho growing organically? And therein they will find the answers. Because it's allowing people to do what they naturally love to do and that is to be neighbors and to communicate and community. We all remember the village square. We, we're all nostalgic for the village square. We all come from villages. We all come from communities. And this is lacking. But it needn't be black or white. You can have a city with village feelings in certain areas. And this is what pedestrianizing does. And 
I, I urge uh, the various government departments and interested um, stakeholders to look at this carefully and ask the significant question, why is SOHO growing organically? And there they will find the answers. If uh, a community of this, of this nature can evolve organically, and it will happen, right? Mm. That means that we don't really need a lot of government uh, intervention or support then. Other than, say, uh, designate the area as a pedestrian, you know, uh, off to the yes. traffic, right? So it should, it, w it should not be such a, uh, a difficult thing to do. But I suppose, you know, once you uh, initiate that, that's, that sort of uh, restriction, and maybe... Uh, the motorists in the area might, might, might feel, you know, inconvenient by it, you know. So it's just a matter of uh, weighing which is more important. I suppose if you, if you drive around, it's much easier to drive around whatever area you need to than for the people to walk around. Um, because, you know, Bob was saying that it is a worldwide trend. And according to this uh, professor's experience, uh, prof uh, Professor Enriquez from Bogota, experience. It actually reduces the pollution. Uh, I'm sure in, uh, in, in South America the pollution is probably more serious than in, than in Hong Kong. And people are happier. And not only that people are happier, and people are happier because they are financially independent. And that's what we're trying to, you know, that's the kind of problem that we are facing in Hong Kong. We are seeing the poverty level increasing, you know, you know going through the million, a million people who are living in poverty. And they, they, you know, the number is increasing. So that's why Better Hong Kong is trying to find ways to solve the problem. So I, it looks like, because now that you mentioned it, then I remember all the places my friend took, you know, took me to, all the city, even in West and in Virginia, uh, Blackbird, where the shooting you know, took place. And I remember my, you know, my professor was taking me in the area, and it was you know, something like this, pedestrian mm. area. Mm. You know, people walk through the area and the restaurant on both sides. So it looks like all major cities you know, tend to develop that. And Hong Kong, that is probably one of the solutions for Hong Kong. Like, like you were pointing out, true, you know, it, it seems to take care of the uh, cultural, you know, uh, arts and culture because all the handicraft, you know, have an have a, have a, have a outlet for the local handi and the handicraft. And uh, mm -hmm. environmentally, you know, you, you cut down the, the traffic pollution and, uh, and it, it, it provides leisure spaces other than just big mega shopping malls and movie houses. I like movies, but I have difficulty finding enough movies to go hmm. because, you know, how many? You know, maybe I go every week, but pretty soon, you know, you run out of all the movies to go. And because, why do I go to movies? Because there's nothing else to do in Hong Kong. You know, every time I, I, I have spare time, I need to, people need to fly away or go to, go to China. I think, I think that's just because you have to apply to mm -hmm. the globalized way. For example, you have to watch Batman, you have to watch mm. The Mummies, okay? Mm. There's everyone in the world that mm. you are good, <laughs> that, mm. that, okay, to watch that kind of movie, okay? Mm. That's what the problem is. So that's why we are just finding, we just want to find something different from it, okay? That's about locality. That's about something that we can't find in any city that we can find, okay? Right. Yeah. So that's why I think Okay, for some, okay, for, for, we are just want to, okay, we are just wanting to get some market space, okay, get a space for us to earn, okay, to, okay, develop, okay, what we are thinking about myself, what we are thinking about uh, my identity is, okay, that's really important because, okay, what Hong Kong people is thinking about it's not about just about the world about the lo uh, uh, about globalized okay about the globalized thing and also about something that is okay that is about us okay that's not that that that's different from the other okay community that's really important a unique okay. identity yeah a unique identity that's really important yeah Another area that I think we mentioned uh, about this last time, you know, that way it's very suitable for for uh, large scale uh, people's market will be the uh, the old the uh, the old airport area, th which is to be developed oh, yes. in the ocean terminal. So I can imagine, you know, all the tourists coming to Hong Kong, where would they want to go? To go to all the shops that they're familiar with, 
you know, all the name brand shops, they would like to go places where local people sell their local local fare. So I feel that if we were to develop an ocean terminal with spaces there, rather than just you know, just sh- the, the same chain stores, we should have, we should develop a people's market in the area, and that would be a very unique feature. And then people going off 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 the boat and you know, off the ocean line, and they just just walk down there, and all these activities. Bob's, according to your experience, is it hard to manage that kind of area, like uh, like the one like the one in Soho? Mm. Do the tenants, um, owners, workers, shopkeepers, they can get together and settle the trivial matters of that area? We know that managing area is not easy. Yes, true. Uh, whenever you put different people together, there's bound to be some conflict. But in a case like this, it's a win-win scenario. So it's in all of our interest to keep the streets clean, to look after the trees, to look after the pavements. It's in everyone's interest because this brings in more wealth. And I'm not just talking about material wealth, but also spiritual wealth, physical wealth. Um, obviously, a committee would have to be formed, perhaps like something like a Soho committee of business and tenant owners. They can all come together, and like every committee, there'll there'll be a board of directors. And but I, I think the benefits far, far, far outweigh the um, the the misbenefits. I mean, it it can be really a case of a win-win scenario for one and all. I wonder who would be the poor guy to manage that area. It's not an easy job. <laughs> no, it it, 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 it it won't be an easy job. But you know, where there's Can a will, you there's a way. All different cultures, mm. all walks of life. They have, you have Chinese, you have Indians, you have Pakistan, mm. you have Europeans, Americans. Mm. They have different cultures. They mm. have different ways of expressing their opinions. Mm. Just a simple cleaning matters. Mm. It's really hard. Mm. Do you do you enc- encounter these kind of difficulties? Yes, I I can foresee the challenges for sure. Um, but the rewards are so high that it's so worth it. You know, it's it's worth sacrificing a, a few black hairs to you know. So Popsy, yes, pay that manager well. I, w- I would love to if, 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 if this vision comes true and. Uh, I, it would be an honor, actually. <laughs> I, I'm telling you about the difficulty. It's about, okay, something that, okay, you experience is about those government officials, okay? They're just trying to, okay, not doing something. They just think, okay, that's all right, okay? Because they encounter a lot of difficulties, as, okay, Mr. Lee mentioned, okay, about, okay, something that we have to, okay, we have to, um, we have to get along with the difficulties between different um, different religions, different cultures, different kind of experts. Okay, mm. that those government officials, because they are just inherited from the British side. Okay, they really don't want to. Okay, to to, to get along with it. <laughs> okay, so that's why those British officials are reluctant. To do something mm. about it. Mm. <laughs> mm. No, I mean, I, yeah. I, I still don't understand wh- why why you see all this uh, problem coming. I mean, to me, it's just an area where people, you know, do their own businesses. They run their d- different shops. You know, they set up their, uh, their, their you know their crafts and restaurants. You know, different type of uh, yeah. It uh, can, it can, could be happen in a peaceful way. Yeah, I mean, why don't see? Wh- I mean, the only difference is that instead of letting the traffic, you know, run through the area now, you know, no traffic and people people walk through there. So what, what's the difference? Why 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 you en- en- envision all this? You know, I mean, it's going to be gang fighting. Yeah, I mean, is that is big enough you know, battlefield for for gangs to to gather and fight? I mean, yeah, I know, I know, I, I, I understand. What, what the concern? I understand the concern. Okay, yeah. that that they are raising by you, but I mean those uh, government. No problem. But I mean no those government officials. Okay, before the handover or before, okay, having some, okay, some places, okay, some street hawkers, okay, that they have to, okay, they, 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 they have to, okay, uh, uh, give them the license, okay, that's not a problem because they are inherited from it, because they are, okay, they are just struggling, okay, for it, but they are not, okay, they are not going to, okay, because, okay, in the system, okay, in, in the government system, they are not going to, okay, 
to create some troubles, okay? They're just thinking these are some troublesome issues, okay? Unless they are regulated by the private side. For example, they are regulated by the, okay, okay, by a business center, by a, by, by, by a, a plaza, by something. They lost to it. Okay, they're just thinking, okay, okay, this is not our issue. Okay, if we are, if they are regulated by some private enterprise, that's not a problem. But if they have to be regulated by the government side, okay, they just think, oh, what's the problem is? Okay, then, um, I mean, the government officials, they, they really have the problem of, okay, getting into, okay, something really difficult. If they can, okay, if they can, of course, overcome this. That's a that, that that's really good. But but, but, but where's the problem? And we already pointed it out. It's a worldwide trend. Every city is doing it. And this mayor professor is coming to tell it's a successful story. So what I mean that concerned about? I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. That. I'm sorry to say that. That's the problem of those Hong Kong. Well, I have an education officer. Yeah, I can it's say it's not something like a a a or it was a success story. Okay. So. Because I, I, I know a lot, uh, I, I know someone, okay, who is from the AO side or EO side, they, they, they just think, okay, don't burden me, okay? They really don't, don't burden me through, okay? Well, I thought it's, okay. it's always up to Hong Kong people. Yeah, I think well, so. I have a uh, thinking, something like that. You mentioned uh, you want to maybe joining uh, Dr. Yun to have a campaign to ask to uh, pedestrianize Soho area, but my my idea is is a pedestrian area should be developed naturally. Maybe you don't know. We our young days, uh, streets are pedestrianized yeah. by market mm. because hawker go there, mm. and and <laughs> as time goes by, the street is occupied by hawkers and ordinary people, mm. and it's a really natural development of pedestrianization. Mm. Right. And only the tram or only on the few cars can go through it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of that season, and it's quite good. But you are talking about planning something, mm -hmm. and I don't think it mm -hmm. is a good idea. Mm -hmm. In, if you want to plan something, then it's artificial. Mm -hmm. It becomes artificial, and you will think of one thing: the mm -hmm. reclamation area in Central. Yeah. Yeah. Something day. Yeah, see, yeah. That was a market because there was an open space, reclaim uh, area, a car park place, area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then hawker began to swarm in in the evening, and that become a very popular place. Used to be very popular in Hong mm -hmm. Kong, and and a lot of local culture street culture developed there. Mm -hmm. Food very special and become a tourist spot. In fact, Why? so all those things are developed naturally, mm -hmm. not by planning. Mm -hmm. But if you say you want to plan something mm -hmm. to develop a soul area, would it be good? Very good points. Do you want to go for it, Bella? Yeah, mm -hmm. before that, uh, because of, I think, the Hong Kong environment has changed and hawkers become illegal now. Hawkers become illegal if they don't have license. Right. So that thing could not happen naturally anymore right. because of the hawker's license. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so and, and so we can see government officials removing hawkers yeah, okay. all the time now in Graham Street, Hill Street, Elgin Street. Yes, because I, you know, even in my uh, childhood in North Point, I remember this um, marble row. I mean, there's all these you know stores. But of course, eventually they cleared out. And I don't know wh whether it was illegal or it was just a legal structure. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we have we have a, a phone, phone in. in. Yeah, okay. hello there. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes. Yes, hi, Vicky. And, um, I'm just wondering, I have a question um, for Boxy. Yes. Do you think it would be a good idea to organize um, something like the Notting Hill Arts Festival in Soho so that you can maybe convince people to pedestrianize Soho? That's a fantastic idea, um, something along the lines of a Soho festival. Um, whereby a festival could be organized for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and it could be like a carnival-type festival with um, Alfresco Dining, Street Theater, and everything else we see in some of these very successful street um, carnivals. You referred to Notting Hill Carnival Festival, which I visited quite a few times, and it's a fantastic experience and brings a lot of wealth to the community. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea, Ms. Vortex. And, uh, there is a, there's a thing called Reclaim the Street as 
well in Sydney. So, like, people just spend one day reclaiming the street, dancing on the street, and putting the couches on there. I think that would be a great idea. <laughs> yes, I mean, if, if you or anyone else is, is happy and uh, willing to, you know, instigate such ideas, I'd be more, more than happy to support them. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea. Thank you, thank Bye-bye. you. Thank yeah. You. So you know, I, I I guess you know, I mean, people do uh, share a similar uh, you know uh, visions and and desire. So it's something that we you know we can do something about you know, through through the platform of Better Hong Kong because you know it is a structure in de- in place for four mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. and then we entertain projects. You know, so anybody who have any idea that they can help to Better Hong Kong, uh, please let us know. Um, but bear in mind, we also want action. You know, we just, you know, idea is good. Uh, but we want people who are able to put things into action too. That's what, that's what is lacking in Hong Kong. The era for procrastination is over. But, yeah. The era for action now. So back to, you know, I mean, what, it's just up to us. If we want it, we do something about it. You know, in, in my policy statement, I emphasize the fact that the world can only be changed if we, people understand the simple concept is that everything comes to you yourself. If you want to, you want the world to change, yeah, you do something about it. And uh, anyway, so I always say that in Hong Kong, because there's a lot of system, okay, that really entrench us, okay. For example, the uh, education system, the legal system, okay, the political system, that always okay entrench us. I think okay, in order. To okay, in order to strive for okay, to strive for a better living, okay, we should okay break through these kind of barriers, okay, between us. Because these are all the barriers that are that we are really have to face, okay. And um in initially in that kind of system that no one wants to break through this kind of entrenchment towards us. So I mean, like Foxy in your in your card for life, organic health cafe. You know, there's this uh, uh, saying from Mahama uh, Gandhi: "Be the change you want to see in the world." Mm. So our part, <laughs> our our robot, I can make a difference. Yes, I can. Okay, time is time is uh, is up. So thanks for uh, listening, and then we look forward to uh, you know to the next week, and then we'll continue to discuss about. Uh, how to make Hong Kong better? Uh, well, you know, we we didn't. We, I guess we didn't warn you. This this is going to be the uh, the Eng- English uh, channel uh, for this for this week. Anyway, we'll see. You know, we might be have enough Japanese people here that we all talk Japanese or Mandarin. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. <laughs>